that. The first Sabbath I was with you, I had an extraordinary experience and, and, and privilege. I had the opportunity to get in that pool behind me there. And I'm so excited that, that, that I got a call um, a couple of weeks ago um, that's giving me another opportunity to get in there today. I got a call from, from, from Elder Peterkin, and, and Elder, I don't, I don't see it, but if you're here, come, come and join me uh, at this time. It was a uh, guy, he said that a few weeks back that we had a speaker and there was an altar call that was made. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, he said, I have been baptized, but I joined this church not really fully understanding and knowing what I was doing or what I was getting into. And I've been learning and studying and stuff along the way, but, but that original commitment, he says, I know that it was not a commitment that I made of my own free will and that I had all of the understanding that I needed to have when I did that. And he said, and I want the world to know that I'm not just in this thing just because somebody pushed me. He said, I want the world to know, the church to know, that I'm in this thing because I have fallen deeply and madly and passionately in love with Jesus Christ. And so this morning, he's gone through these vows, and so I'm not reading these vows so much for him, I'm reading for all of us, that as we go into the water now, just for you to, just to, and, and I want you to make the decision and, 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 and challenge yourself. Those of you that have taken these vows, that when I did this, is this something that I am committed to, not just on the day that I said I do, but am I recommitting my heart and my life and myself to this thing, to this God, to this man, day by day, moment by moment? Elder Peter, can I need to ask you these questions again? It's just a reconfirmation of something that he has already done. And I'm going to ask that those of you that still believe, that still still make this choice, make this decision to follow Jesus all the way, that when I ask the question that you would join myself and Elder Peterkin as we say I do at the end of these vows. Do you believe in God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ and in His Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. I do. Amen. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of men and believe that through faith in His shed blood men are saved from sin and its penalty? Yes, I do, indeed. Renouncing the world and its sinful ways, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you believe that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? Yes, I do. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing Him as your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary? And do you claim His promise to strengthen you by His indwelling Spirit so that you may have power to do His will? Yes, I do. Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired Word and that it constitutes the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Yes, I do. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as still binding upon Christians? And is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord? Yes, I do. Is the soon coming of Jesus the blessed hope in your heart? And do you determine to be personally ready to meet the Lord and do all in your power to witness his, to his loving salvation and by life and word help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Yes, I do. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts? And do you believe that the gift of prophecy in the remnant church is one of the identifying marks of that church? Yes, I do. Do you believe in church organization and is it your purpose to support the church by your tithes and offerings, your personal effort and your influence? Yes, I do. Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that you are to honor God by caring for your body, body avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, sale of tobacco in any of its forms or human consumption, and from the misuse or misuse or of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs? Yes, I do. 
knowing and understanding the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is it your purpose by the grace of God to order your life in harmony with these principles? Yes, I do. Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your faith in Jesus Christ and in the forgiveness of your sins? Yes, indeed. And do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, language, and tongue are invited and accepted into its fellowship? And do you desire, which you already have, membership? Do you, let me ask this this way. And do you desire to maintain your membership in this local congregation of the world's church? Yes, I do. Amen. You have heard these vows. I pray that you have also assented to them again yourself. We're going to invite our, our our folk to come up and lead us in our hymn of worship as we go to the pool at this time.
The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out of the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. What a, what a pertinent and question that is asked there. Can these bones live? What we're about to witness right now is just a testimony to the fact that, yeah, these bones can live. Um, I'm going to ask the family members, loved ones of, of uh, Elder Peterkin, if you are here, you want to stand at this time in support of this decision. Um, that you would do so at this time. I just want to share with the church family that I love you all very much. And as the pastor mentioned before, uh, the reason I'm uh, rededicating myself to God is because when I first was baptized into this message, I was at the end of a crusade, and I did it more so out of fear than out of love. You know, everybody there at the end of the crusade was, was getting baptized and uh, the, the uh, evangelist was talking about, um, you know, eternal damnation if you don't make the choice to be, to be baptized. And so that was why I had made the choice to be baptized. And ever since then, it's always been pressing on my mind that I really did not do it out of love. And so for the last two months, the Holy Spirit has really been pressing me about that, that you did not get baptized out of your love for Jesus. And so that's why I'm recommitting my love to him. And now, Deborah, because you have fallen deeply and madly and passionately in love with my friend, Jesus Christ, yes. it is my pleasure and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 